Hello, AfterBuzz TV fans. I am at RTX with Shannon McCormick. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Um, let's get right into this. Let's talk a little bit about Ruby because we had one hell of a development for Ozpin last season. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a hell of a development. He's, um, he's inhabiting the body of a younger boy. <laughs> I don't think you could have phrased that more awkwardly you know, if you tried. I was really trying to think through how I was going to talk about that. Anyway, yeah, um, we think, uh, well, Oz has gone missing at the end of three, and uh, and it's we never see what happens to him. Uh, and then, of course, uh, his you know accoutrements are uh, recovered. Um, and so there's a bit of a mystery as to what's happened to Oz. And then he turns up in an unexpected place, which is in non-corporeal form, inside the mind of a very confused young farmhand named Oscar. Who may or may not think he's going crazy. Yes, exactly. He, he may or may not. I didn't bring this up on the panel that we had, but there's a little touch of Legion going on in there, if you've watched that show um, on FX. Anyway, um, he's uh, anyway. Yeah, he doesn't know what's happening to him, and Ospin is uh, trying to tell him what's up. So, what's your take on that relationship? What do you think about that? Well, I can't say because I've been given more like background as to what's going on. So, like, I'm not like I'm, when I saw it on the page, I'm like, what the heck's going on? And they give some backstory so so that I knew how to play it and what's going on and what the what's going to come up in season five. So I can't really say like what that relationship is exactly, um, but um, yeah, <laughs> that's a, that's, a, that's as much as I, I think that's as much as I can as a, as much as I can say, um, but. I think I can say this because I think it's it's I mean it's set up in the world that that this is the way you're supposed to feel. He's not going crazy. This is an actual relationship that is happening, and then how it's going to continue to manifest itself will be um, is going to play out more in season five. All right. Yeah. Um, pie in the sky. Where would you like that to go? Um. I can't again. I can't answer that one because I know how it is going to go. Okay. Although, although I should say, it's like. 75% sure that that's the way it's going to go. This development is a little bit like it's still in flex. I think they have like big, they have bold strokes in in mind um, for how things are going to play out in the future. And then that may be beyond season five as well. I mean, we're talking like even further episode or future seasons down the line. They have the bold strokes. I don't think they know exactly how the mechanics are always going to work out and they're fine tuning that as they go. So um, we may find out in the theoretical season nine. Exactly, exactly. Or or sooner than that. I would think sooner than that. But but I don't think all will be revealed in season five. So Well, no, where's the fun in that? No, exactly. Well, yeah, not, not all will be revolved. Re, re, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Not all will be revealed at all in any season <laughs> for anything. Hashtag it's, spoilers. Has, hashtag spoilers. Exactly. Yeah. You got to keep the mystery going, um, as, you know, for various things. Yeah. In a more corporeal sense, we got Ozpin physically for the first time this season in Ruby Chibi. In Ruby Chibi. That's right. Uh, yeah. Which was, uh, which was a lot of fun to do. They had said, oh, you know, I... To be honest, I think they wanted to bring some of those characters like Ozpin in in season one and um, they just... Um, Time frame and the amount of animation and rigging that they needed to do for the various for the various characters. We're like, okay, we're gonna keep we're gonna keep the initial character set smaller, and now they're they're branching out for season two and adding more. So um, I don't know. I can't remember if everything that I've done has aired so far, or if there's still some Ozpin stuff coming up for Ruby Chibi. I I don't I don't watch Ruby Chibi. <laughs> I'm going to go with, let's hope there's more. I think there's more. I think there's more, but I'm not 100% sure. What um, Ozpin stories would you like to have in Ruby Chibi? Is there a gag that you really like that you'd like to see played out or mm. anything like that? I think that what they've done with him is pretty spot on, which is he's like, he's exasperated. There's like maybe a little meta commentary going on. Uh, he's trying to wrangle. I think like the whole wrangle theatrical productions angle is like the way to go. And since everything in Ruby has such a strong fairy tale element or other aspects of folk culture or whatever, I think like the more like theatrical productions that they can be doing that he has to, you know, there's various ways that they get messed up. I think that'd be cool. Exasperated director, director slash stage a mom. Yeah, Ozpin. exactly, exactly. Yeah, exasperated stage mom Ospin. That's yes. Hashtag, hashtag exasperated stage mom 
I was pinned. That's not like 140 characters. That's all you can tweet. It already is. But it says so much already. Exactly. It's yeah. It's all the context you need. I need that on a shirt. Yes. All right. Let's let's talk a little bit about Camp Camp. We have the quartermaster who may or may not be a deluded time lord. Uh huh. Yep. And we found out in the panel this weekend that he has a sister. He has a sister, quarter sister. Do you think he has any living relatives that the government doesn't know about? Living? No, we can go into some of the past or missing or we don't like to think about it. Well, relatives. his name is Quartermaster. And uh, we know that there's a quarter sister. So that that's a half. That's all I'm going to say. You think there's a half master somewhere? Or maybe, maybe two other quarters. See what I'm getting at? I'm assuming we're saying. This is quarter brother and this is quarter cousin twice removed. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, exactly. Quarter brother and other quarter brother. It's like a new heart episode. And what would you like to do with the quartermaster? Like oh, if you dude. could do anything on oh, the season. If I could do any. Oh, uh, I've done it. It's the episode that's coming up. It's so, dude, this episode is so... It, it, uh, when does this air? Because it's probably going to air after the Camp Camp episode has aired, maybe at least for first members. I don't know. Oh, this is going up in like two hours. Oh, okay. So, okay. No, it's not. Okay. No, it's not. Longer than that to but, okay. It's going up tomorrow. It's going up tomorrow. Okay. So, we'll go out before the new Camp Camp episode yes. comes out. Yes. All I have to say is watch it as soon as you can. So, if you're a first member, watch it right away. If you're, you know, if you wait for it to go up on YouTube or, or uh, in general on the site, watch it then because it's, it's just, it's bonkers or you could get a first membership and watch it the moment it drops exactly. yeah exactly you could get a get a first membership and watch it right away it's it's really bonkers um and uh, so i helped with the story a little bit like carrie had written this the script basically and he came in and he's like hey i want to buy some ideas off you so i sat in a room with miles and jordan and gray and carrie and and me and we talked through some some things and I made a suggestion that was really bonkers. Uh, it w the script wasn't done, but he had the outlines of the story beats mapped out. And there's a couple things that were being tweaked. I made a suggestion that's really bonkers, and Carrie actually went with it, and it um, made it into the show. And I just, I really can't, I can't wait for people to watch this episode because it's really just, it's, it's amazing. I love it. It's one of the favorite, my favorite things I've done uh, in a while at Rooster Teeth. So a week from Friday, you're going to be pulling up YouTube and looking at everyone's reaction yeah, exactly, videos just exactly. to see. see. I'm figure out what was my contribution or whatever the case might be. But it's really, it's, uh, it's, it's crazy. So you've lived the quartermaster dream. Then. I've lived the quartermaster dream. Um, but the other thing that it does is it sets up maybe some bigger questions about quartermaster. That like why? Well, why does he exist? <laughs> um, no, I think it, it is there. There will be there will be some things that will come up that people will just say, "What is happening at Camp Campbell?" And and then and then so I'm hoping you know again this is like planted out there so like there might be an episode in season three or four where like other developments of quartermaster's uh, really weird backstory um sort of shape up in the background of these kids lives well and we still have the king of the for uh, king of the forest plot line because squirrel king is dead and eye patch squirrel is definitely still out there yeah eye patch squirrel is still out there there's you know there's all kind of, he's got there's a there's like a vast hidden world out there underneath the um the world of camp campbell which i don't know how much they're gonna go i mean i don't know how much they're gonna explore like you know i don't know if it's gonna to be like I, to be honest I, I doubt it I think it's going to be it's going to stay purely episodic but it, it, it has enough elements like a Gravity Falls where it seems like oh this is an episodic show and then it turns wait no it's not it's this grand it, things keep changing and it becomes this bigger bigger gigantic interconnected storyline I don't think that's going to happen but maybe it will well we've got a volcano and a, quarter, and a quartermaster's linchpin of how it all connects <laughs> <laughs> he did seem to have access to an ancient prophecy something i don't know we'll see it, it's all it's all also it's fairly disposable in the sense of like i think it's a kind of show where you can drop grand conspiracies and then they don't mean anything like the next episode at all and like nobody cares i don't you know like i think you can take it or leave it as as you want to simpson style negative continuity exactly absolutely negative continuity yeah i think there's a possibility for that anyway i just it sounds like the yes and of shows uh yeah exactly yeah all right and let's let's Swing into red versus blue. Okay, red and this versus is, blue. I know you have some feelings about that. I'm going to cry on your shoulder for a minute. Just, just, so, <laughs> just a minute. So, Wash is in a murder fridge. I'm in a murder fridge. He's in a murder fridge. Yep. 
How did you feel getting that script? Um, I was like, what's going on, Joe? Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't know how I felt about it. Um, to be honest, I, I don't know how I feel about it. Because I mean, I say that. you know what happens, but obviously you can't say anything. Can't we still got anything. five episodes, five, six episodes left right. in the season. Right. I can't say anything. Um, again, like you guys were pointing out in the panel on Friday, um, there's a lot of twists and turns this season where you oh, think, yeah. like, oh, the, you know, a lot of false, uh, you know, directions and, and uh, misdirects and things like that. I think that's going, that pattern continues a little bit or... You, I mean, you'll see. I mean, I think like now nah, there's a the the pieces of the bigger story you can see, but um, I I think where things end up are not going to be where people might expect things to end up based on where we are in the story right now. I'm not sure if that gives me hope or terrifies me even more. Uh, I should probably do both. <laughs> it's it's red versus blue anyway. Success. After all, yeah, exactly. It should both terrify you and give you hope. And we got a little bit of character development for both Wash and Carolina mm. in this season, and they mm. got a chance to relax. Yeah, um, yeah, they got to they got to relax and have fun. Were you able to contribute to any of those gags? Or uh, no, I think um, that was all that was all Joe um, for the most part. Yeah, I didn't I didn't have any ideas for that. It was just like here here's what they're doing. Oh, oh cool, yeah, awesome. <laughs> he grew a beard, all right. He grew cool, a beard. Yeah, I like the beard joke. I, I thought that was funny. So, provided that Wash makes it out of the murder fridge, okay. where provided. would you like to see his character go? Um, you know, I've been saying this for a while. I don't know what Wash has left to do, to be honest. Um, he's really kind of been there for a lot of different things. I think they should just let him retire um, and have a little cat store or whatever, you know, a little <laughs> cat house. Um, he runs cat, a cat cafe. A cat house? A cat house? Did cat I just house. see this? Yes, yes exactly. He's a, he's a madam. Wash becomes a madam. That's where I want to say it. That's my answer now. Matt, Wash becomes a madam. He runs a brothel, space brothel. Uh, everybody has to keep their armor on. <laughs> That's my answer. That's where I want to see him go. I need a minute. Season season nineteen. That's all it's going to be is just like weird, like a weird like machinima porn with uh, Wash's brothel. Tucker um, will be happy. I guess so. Yeah, exactly. It's all it's just, just for Tucker. Yeah, exactly. The bottom floor is a cat cafe, but you have to show your ID to get upstairs. Exactly. Exactly. You have to know the password. Someone's going to write this now. <laughs> I know, right? Hey, f hey, fanfic writers, make it happen. I want to see this. I want fan art of Wash's Brothel, and uh, we'll, let's see what you guys got. Be careful what you wish oh, for. Oh, no, I know. I know there's all kinds of things out there, so I'm just, I'm just planting some seeds. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I should have more questions prepped, but now I'm stuck here. Now you're, now you're, now you're stuck in Wash's. Now, now, now you're stuck in Wash's brothel. It's, uh, it's a Hotel California. You can enter, but you, you, can, anytime you, like, but you, you can, can never, never leave. leave. Exactly. I feel like that's most of I think fandom. That's, I think, yeah, I think that's people's relationship with, uh, with their fandoms in general. With Red versus Blue, we've been here for 15 years. Uh, yep. Yep. <laughs> What do you think of some of the fan reactions to this season? Have you seen them? Has there been anything that stood I, out to you? No, you know, I haven't. I So I have been busy doing some other projects and I haven't really followed the progress of this season. So I didn't know. I didn't know what had aired yet until um, until the con. Screaming. Well, until or actually until I came to the con and I was just like, where where are we? And people would say stuff. And I was like, oh, OK, I know where because I've, rec you know, obviously I've recorded further than where we are right now. But. Um, so I haven't really been following the fan reactions in real time. So that, that was kind of lost on me, but I, I was, um, you know, I've, I've been, I've been hearing bits and pieces as, um, you know, I heard about your 53 minute reaction video, for instance. Yep. That occurred. Yeah. Uh, you could go to my YouTube channel and watch me cry. Uh, <laughs> what other projects are you working on? Can you tell us about them? Um, well, so the big one, I can't, uh, for a while people find out about it, but I can't talk about it for a while. And then, um, and then, you know, re for other, uh, non rooster things, I just, uh, booked a gig, uh, doing some characters that I've done, uh, for DC, uh, universe online. So, um, you know, some new content that's coming out, uh, that will f feature some characters that I played already. Um, that was a lot of fun. I'm trying to think what else. I have a couple little animated things um, that are playing here in the Animation Festival. Uh, King of Atlantis, I have a role in that, which is um, the um, 
Mighty Coconut is a uh, animation studio based here in Austin. They were commissioned by YouTube to work with the Joe and Cody guys. I don't really know them. They make Minecraft um, stuff, and then they turned it into an animated series for YouTube Red. And uh, and then uh, spaceship, uh, what's it called? Space spaceship grapefruit? What's it called? It's it, it played. It sounds amazing. It, it was used to be called Sam Sweet Milk, and it's this guy uh, Jason from the UK who's making this like sweet animated uh, space opera kind of show. Uh, and I play a character in that. And uh, oh look, hey, there's Sam. <laughs> we'll cut this out. We'll cut this out. Get out. Of, get out of here. Oh no, this yeah. this uh, isn't getting. Yeah. All right. Um, anyway, so uh, so yeah, some other projects. The the big one I can't talk about, but people will know about it soon. All right. Um, is there anything else you'd like to say to the fans? Uh, thank you, guy. Thank you, all of you, every fan, for being a fan of all the shows and uh, being just being awesome and uh, keep loving what you love and keep watching our shows and uh, keep watching these guys' shows because they, you know, they do an awesome job of like of connecting us with the fans as well. So Aww. yeah, thank you. Right? Yeah, or you could just cut out the middleman and just send me money. That would I don't even know what that means. I don't know what that means at the at the at Washes' Washes uh, cat house brothel. Cat house brothel. Yeah, okay. that's I think that's a beautiful <laughs> that's a note great to end way on. To end this. All right. Thank you so much for yeah, joining us today. Yeah, you're welcome, Katie. Yeah, thank you. Bye. <laughs>